This video talks about isolated mitral stenosis. So when do we have isolated mitral stenosis? It usually happens with rheumatic fever. 70% um, of the cases only mitral valve is affected and 25% of the cases both mitral and aorta or aortic valve is going to be affected. But let's just talk about isolated mitral stenosis and see what happens when we deal with isolated mitral stenosis. So there won't be stenosis of the, um, of the tricuspid or the pulmonary or the aortic. So if we have isolated mitral stenosis, what kind of effect would we see? Because of mitral stenosis, there is going to be uh, pressure mounting in the right at left atrium, okay? Because of this pressure, there is going to be dilatation of the right atrium dilatation and hypertrophy both can happen right because of increased pressure the next thing that can happen is um, the wedge pressure the wedge pressure is going to pick this up so the wedge pressure of the left atrium is going to be high right there is also going to be increased backflow onto the pulmonary vein now imagine that this is the pulmonary vein, so the pressure inside the pulmonary vein is also going to rise, right? Which is going to cause backflow pressure and which is going to cause increased pressure uh, in the pulmonary artery, right? Increased pressure in the pulmonary artery. And this increased pressure is going to increase pulmonary resistance, right? This pulmonary resistance is also going to cause um, um, this is going to cause the pulmonary artery to hypertrophy often they are referred to as laminated medial hypertrophy right so this increased pressure is going to flow back onto the right ventricle so the pressure in the right ventricle is also going to be high okay and this pressure is going to flow back onto the tricuspid. So there is going to be problems with tricuspid. We can have tricuspid regurge because it's going to put, if the increased pressure is going to push the valves backwards. And the pressure in the right atrium is also going to be high and hence forward. So when we have um, isolated mitral stenosis, all these things are happening. So let's do a quick review. So right ventricular dilatation, is that going to happen? Right ventricular dilatation, sure, that can happen. What about increased systolic pulmonary artery pressure? Sure, it's going to happen, right? Increased pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, that is also going to happen right here, right? Tricuspid regurg, sure, it's going to happen right here, right? What about reduced pulmonary compliance? Okay, so let's talk about pulmonary compliance. With increased time, there is going to be more and more resistance in this uh, pulmonary artery, uh, and this is going to be due to uh, medial hypertrophy, right? Laminated medial hypertrophy. As a result, with time, there is going to be reduced compliance. And what is compliance? Compliance is equal to delta V by delta P, right? Reduced compliance means there, there is going to be reduced change in volume, there is going to be increased pressure. So even though the pressure is going to increase, the volume is not going to change. That means this vessel is going to get really, really stiff. Is that going to happen? Of course it's going to happen. Now, what is not going to happen? These are the things that's going to happen. Let's talk about what's not going to happen. What's not going to happen is there will not be any effect on the um, left ventricle left ventricle is going to be normal what's going to be the what's going to be the effect on the aortic valve it's going to be normal okay so if that's the case because the pressure is not affecting the left ventricle the pressure is not affecting the aortic valve right so that's why these are going to be normal so if i say what's going to be the left ventricular pressure okay is the left ventricular pressure be increased why would it be increased because the pressure is all in here not in here so the pressure is not going to be increased what if I say the left ventricular pressure is going to be decreased not really decreased what it's going to be is is going to be normal the pressure in the left ventricle is going to be normal the pressure in the aorta 
is going to be normal. So what about LVEDP? What is going to be that? Well, what is LVEDP? It's left ventricular end diastolic volume. Really, it's re left ventricular pretty much preload. That's what it means. So the preload is also going to be normal. Don't be under the impression that it's going to be decreased. It's going to be normal. So anything from the left ventricle onto the aorta and anything here is going to be normal.